Hello and welcome to Access Chat. We're pre Davos, pre World Economic Forum, and we're pleased to welcome back Caroline Casey because uh, this time last year you were telling us about the launch of the Valuable 500 and 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 really pleased to see the huge momentum that's got behind it. Uh, and a year on, you're about to return to Davos, and and amazing things have happened. So congratulations. I know it's been enormously hard work because I've seen you ping-ponging across the globe we sometimes are cross yeah. paths cross um, but well done you're almost final mile for for this stage anyway um, so tell us how's it been going and and what's coming well well first of all thank you access chapter for being one of our partners because we've done this but we've done this because we've had a great I think tribe of people who've been around us and supporting us and seeing the need for CEO accountability and leadership. That, that's, that's been our common ground. And I just want to say a huge thank you to you guys. Um, I was thinking that this time last year, we still hadn't the brand finished. We hadn't the website done. And we were putting the final touches to the film. And when you, today, um, as we speak and as I'm talking to you, there are companies coming through. So we're at 231 uh, companies, and I could not be more proud. I really am. And, and just so I can give you some context of what that is, that represents um, in revenue uh, 3.8 trillion, uh, in employees uh, 9.6 million, in countries it's 24, and in sectors it's 39. Um, and that's going to change by tomorrow, and that's what's so exciting. You know, we have started to create this wave and this movement of leadership accountability. So, yeah, I think we're proud and exhausted, but proud, very proud. Yeah, as you should be. Um, so, I mean, that's a, those are huge, huge numbers. Um, and, 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 you know, what you asked was for people to to make that commitment. And it's been it's been uh, really interesting to see which CEOs have and, and, and which yeah. haven't. And, yeah. and uh, the kind of domino effect that you see with you know, leaders coming on board and then the sector looking around and go, oh, they're doing it. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> maybe if they're doing it, maybe, should I be doing this? Um, yeah. So, so I think I think that uh, you know you've you've done an amazing job of creating that kind of momentum. Uh, who were the real early adopters? Because I mean, last year you had some people at the top table at Davos. Mm -hmm. So they, they, you know, they're your real, uh, you know, the early people, the Paul Polmans, the Ashok Vaswanis, and and uh, gosh, I'm having a, a brain. Oh, well, no, right no, now. I the mean, I, I, I can, I can but, fill, I can fill yeah. in your gaps. So we have two yeah. strategic partners. So one is Virgin Media, yeah. and yeah. that was led by Jeff Dodds, uh, who's the CEO there. Yeah. We had Omnicom Media Group which was led by Janet Riccio, who um, tragically yeah. died in July, um, and then also One Young World. But at the main stage in Davos last year, we mm -hmm. had um, Carolyn Tastet of Procter & Gamble, Paul Pullman of Unilever, Duncan Tate of Fujitsu, Peter Grauer of Bloomberg, and Julie Sweet of Accenture. And she wasn't the global CEO of Accenture at that point. We she have all of them, yeah. I know. So we, had, we got all of those within a 24-hour period. Um, Barclays were at our press conference similarly. Um, and so our early adopters were that, that group, and, and I cannot thank them enough. Um, but very, very quickly afterwards, um, you know, we had real interest from organizations who were keeping an eye on what Unilever was doing, for example, or banking. So HSBC came on very quickly, or Danske Bank. And actually, we've seen the sector that's taken this up the quickest is the financial sector. The country that has produced the most is the UK. Um, though I've just come back from Israel on Monday, and we signed up 37 CEOs and companies on Monday, which is extraordinary. Um, but ATOS, uh, your employer, that they came through fairly quickly as well. Um, and then we, we kind of get the unusual ones that you know from industries that we wouldn't necessarily be used to. So. We're delighted to see Arup join or Savills join. I mean, that's fantastic. Um, you know, Virgin Active from the leisure industry, Sainsbury came on very, very quickly. Um, so it just really depends on what, what of which country we're in and what industry. Um, but I have to say, my greatest sense of pride has come from 
you know, when Japan, when NTT signed from Japan, like, that's incredible. Because, you know, our intention was always to be global. And I, 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 I hopefully um, mm -hmm. can stand by that we are global. Uh, and Cineopolis was our, one of our first from Mexico. Um, Mexico, um, from Manpower from Mexico came through very quickly. So there, it's just really interesting, and it really depends on the leaders in the space and, and if they're committed to it and they're willing to push it through. And so, yeah, it's, we, have a, we have a great list. And then I have to say there was a great moment um, when Mark Benioff's signature came through from Salesforce. That was a woohoo! That was a very big one for us, um, and that came through on the 3rd of December. So, yeah, it's been it's exciting. And all, we have all the PWCs and the Deloitte's and the KPMG's and the Accenture's. That's really, really big, too. And, and I really want to be clear that this is not a tick box. Um, you'll see on our website it says we have 467 companies. We don't. They're in discussion because we're incredibly rigorous about making sure that the company is truly committed with the signature of the CEO as a leadership or a board conversation with a commitment to action. And all those actions and action statements and commitments are on our website. So, yeah, it's exciting. Very exciting. So, so Caroline, you see a more uh, predominance on in terms of consumer services or uh, enterprises. Where do you see the things going? You know what I what I what we always imagined that the B two C was going to be very quick, um, and that was the initial. Um, that was really the initial sort of pickup. But in Ireland, for example, we signed thirteen companies on Friday, and the majority of those were law firms. <laughs> like who knew? I mean, <laughs> let's be honest, law firms, I would have said, are the last, they were going to be the last bastion. Um, but they see the opportunity around clients, you see, this is the thing. And when we talk about the valuable 500, we're talking about across your supply chain and your value chain. Um, and they see that as a differentiating factor for, to serve their clients. Um, so that's been very interesting. The professional services have really kind of ponied up very quickly, but I, I would say we probably are at 50-50 now between B2B and B2C, which that's a surprise. It's a surprise. Let, so sure. let's, let's, someone is listening to you, uh, at us, uh, what you're talking here, and they okay, you know, this company signed it. No, I can do it. But it's more than just signing, okay? Because no. sometimes people yeah. might feel that, that uh, you know, you were mentioned Mark Benioff, other CEOs might say, oh, Mark is signing. Someone else is saying, I need to be part of that. But I think it's important to highlight that it's not just signing. You know, no. it's commitment, and then it's following that commitment, you know, you know, next year and the years to come. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we've seen many sort of commitments and pledges. Um, Paul Poman, who's our chairperson, turned around to me a week ago and said, I don't remember seeing an organization who's been able to get over 200 signatures and commitments at board level and CEO level for any issue. And, and the thing that he was probably most impressed by is that it wasn't just a pledge or a tick box. We have been so rigorous. And I mean, Dev would know this, Neil would know this, you would know this. You know, we've had lots of people saying they want to join, but we have had several conversations with those organizations to make sure that their action statement or their commitment is meaningful for where they are in their journey and that it will be delivered. Um, one of our great ones, I think, that I'm very proud of was um, JLR, Jaguar Land Rover, who signed up in August. And this gives me great pleasure because what they did in their sign up process was to get to hold an inclusive design workshop for their team in the UK and asked for 500 ways of being more inclusive in their design process. So number one, this was educating about the disability market and, and their families. But two, it was really identifying with their designers and their engineers that this was a differentiating factor for their career. And that, to me, that's real change. Um, and so it's not just about disability, it's about design for all and inclusive design. So those are the kind of things that we're seeing and, and they're very impactful. Or, when we see relationships being built between WPP and Microsoft, for example, these two huge players, that becomes exciting. Um, and we're, we're, we're starting to see relationships building across the Valuable 500 community. And that's what we want. Because like, together, if we share best practice, we can get there better, quicker, faster. And that's the whole point. But the key to the Valuable 500 is that the CEOs are aware of it, that they're accountable and they're aware of it. We're not asking the CEOs to do it, 
but we want them to know what's going on in their business so that they will continue to support it and fund it so we can operationalize and normalize disability in business. Excellent. Deborah, I know you, you have a question. Yeah, well, and first of all, I'm so proud of you and I'm so proud of your team. And I agree with Paul. It's amazing that you got 230 plus corporations at the CEO and board level. Amazing to do this. And I know we've all been standing with you and I know you always say you haven't done it alone, but at the same time, what you have done, you have been on the road nonstop, 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 which might sound glamorous, but those of us who travel, <laughs> <laughs> it's not glamorous. It is so. It's so not glamorous. You've no. seen all conference rooms and hotel rooms all over the world, and they sort of look the same. So it's it's exhausting. It's tiring. I, I remember seeing you in Geneva, and you said, "I'm beyond tired. I I, I don't even no longer. I I don't even know. I don't even feel." you know, normal anymore because I'm so past being exhausted and tired. So uh, I'm very, I know we all are very, very grateful for what you have done and for your leadership. And I, I was talking to somebody the other day that wants you to be a keynote speaker for them. And I was just saying, you know, Caroline comes across so bubbly and warm and approachable and amazing, but she's a very shrewd businesswoman. And anyone that doesn't take care of Dr. Caroline Casey serious, is just missing the entire point of what inclusion really means. And so I want to first applaud you, Caroline, because you have done, I can't believe you've done that. I cannot believe you brought in 230 plus corporations and you're in conversations with 467 plus. It's, it's sort of amazing. It's sort of an amazing feat that we, there's no way we could have thought that you would have done this. And you did. Um, I also want to applaud you know, people like Janet Riccio from Omnicom. I mean, I had the pleasure to meet her briefly because of May. you. And yes, in May in New York City. And she, she made a comment that touched my heart. She made a comment that she was not hired by her CEO. Um, she, or she was hired by her CEO because of her brain. So even though she acquired ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease later in life, her brain worked just fine. And she was yeah. such an amazing, wonderful woman, and she'll be remembered forever because she showed such leadership. And I know that broke your heart when we lost her. It's it's always a shame when we lo lose the amazing leaders, especially women leaders. And so I, I've been very impressed with, you know, there have been U.S. corporations that have stepped up. In my book, Not Enough, uh, I'm really glad Ernst & Young was an early adopter, and I know they've been supportive of you. I know that... Yeah, yeah. Well, and we should. I I would say to corporations, you need to be a lot more supportive of this, a lot more supportive. And I know I'm working on a couple of really big names. And what's interesting about these efforts, um, I know that Citibank is one of the signers now. And I'm yes, very they proud signs. Of them. Yeah, yes, they're doing that. And I was one of the people that was encouraging them. But what has been interesting about this is we're all taking different approaches and different prongs. So I'm talking to them. You're talking to them, Marianne's talking to them, Neil's talking to them, Antonio's, and on and on and on and on. And so it is a real team group effort. And most players, there's been at least one exception of, a, of an organization not playing nicely in the sandbox. But generally, everybody's really pulling together to support this because this is good for all of us. People with disabilities do need to be fully included. And so I, I wanted to take a moment to celebrate you, to celebrate Janet, to celebrate all of the accomplishments, all of the leaders. We still have a lot of work to do. I'm proud of the U.S. corporations like Tyson's Food and Boeing and Zebra Technologies yeah. and others that have joined. And there's so many that, you know, it would take us the whole show to list all of these amazing leaders like Barclays that have done this. But there's still a lot more to do. And as Paul Pullman once said, uh, he wants it to be the valuable five million, right? So I, I love that you have this amazing man standing with you and all these other leaders standing with you, but there is still a lot of work to do, but we do really, really appreciate you, Caroline. Well, oh, thank you. I, I think um, you guys probably would know, uh, you're so right. I, it, it has been a year I've never, 
been so pushed or so challenged, um, there were days my heart would break uh, because the excuses that we all give for fear of not getting it right. Um, in the US, I think there's probably maybe more fear because the focus on inclusion has been more typically on gender and race. Um, the system, the corporate system within the US is more of a blocker. Um, that being said, we have great leadership in the US. And I think as we move to the second phase of the Valuable 500, I absolutely believe, because as I am speaking to you, we have literally had an American company sign with our signature. Um, and so I just think we have to accept people are at different stages and take them where they're at. The Valuable 500 is about creating a space that's safe for everybody. Um, it's not about shaming and it's not about making people feel bad. It's about saying, listen, how can together we grow confidence and, and comfort in this space? Um, but uh, yeah, I, there has been days that I have been on my knees for sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and Merck. Merck signed too. I was very, and very... Cummins, uh, and Cummins. Yeah. Cummins just yes. signed. Yeah. I mean, there's so yeah. many. It, it, yeah. But so many more that need to prove that they care about the community of people with disabilities and those of us that are aging into disabilities too. We're not going to... This isn't going away, guys. This isn't going away, gals. Anyway, I'll turn it over to Neil. <laughs> yeah, no, no. So, uh, I, yeah, it's an amazing group of companies that you've already managed to to collect, um, and and that is uh, it's one of these things. Like you said, you know, as people come on board, it gains momentum. You know, at, at first, we've been tipping the rock a little bit, rocking it backwards and forwards. As you're seeing now, you know, you're reaching that critical deadline, and they're piling in. It's not one at a time; it's 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 several. So I think, you know, you've done you've done a great job gaining such momentum, and I think that you know, next week there'll be even more. I think Benioff's a big one, as you rightly say, because he's so public about his uh, philanthropic bent and what they're trying to do for good at Salesforce, that, that actually having them on board, having him make that public commitment to appointing a chief accessibility officer is yeah. a really, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a big deal um, because it's going to be very, very visible what they're going to do. Um, because there haven't been that many chief accessibility officers um, anywhere and especially not in big companies you know you've had microsoft you've had uh ibm we've had jenny uh, uh, and she's amazing yeah, and, you know yeah oh yeah no and and microsoft had you know bef before jenny there was rob so microsoft had the longest history in this you know so kudos to microsoft because it's uh, even before such an adela they've done this right but yeah. um but we don't see many of these sort of bellwether companies in the us doing this so having another one that is constantly present in the media doing this is is, is a really big uh, signal to to the industry that, you, that 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 this is happening and it's real and i think that what i can say from uh, our own point of view from uh, as an employee of of one of the companies that signed up was that it made a, it has made a difference to what's happening within the organization a couple of couple of things right you asked us to make a commitment we had those discussions right, at a very top level as to what we were going to publicly commit to. We're actually doing more. So that, that fear of, of you know, getting it wrong is still present, but it didn't yeah. stop us from making a commitment. But what we did was we committed to less than we're actually <laughs> publicly committed to less than we're actually doing because you know, there's still this you know, wanting to put your best face to the world kind of approach that management are always going to want because yeah that's that's natural so um so having read through some of these statements some of them are really quite you know yeah ambitious and and and, and I think that that ambition and and making sure that they follow up on that ambition is really important but when we saw uh what I saw within our own organization was that people saw that this was something that our CEO had made a public pronouncement about saw that he'd signed and it was a, oh, well, Thierry's done this, we need to do this. Not, oh, well, there's already a law in place, but it's, don't worry about that. The boss has signed something, now we need to go and do it, you know. So, so, so that has, you know, has made a, a, a tremendous difference. You know, we've, those discussions are at, at, at the top level of the organization, and people are noticing in what um, our friend Fleur 
Bothwick at uh, EY calls the uh, the permafrost, the, the the middle management. They're, they're they're going oh well the people are talking about this you know. Um, so so I think that that effect over several hundred global companies is going to make a huge difference. So you've done that. Now you're you know you're going to report on it and they're going to talk about it and some more will come on board. What's next? I well, know there's all, more coming. I, oh, there is more coming. Um, first off, it's EY who did our original research um, yes. for Davos last year, and that yes. was under the leadership of Fleur uh, Bothwick, who is a huge friend and ally. Um, and one of the statistics that really shook us was that 56% of our boards had never had a conversation about disability. And I guess that's really what the Valuable 500 was here to, to change. Um, so. EY are again supporting us in the report that we go back with. And part of that report is not only talking about the companies and listing the CEOs and talking about where we're seeing peaks in industry or countries, um, but it's actually outlining what's going to happen for the next phase. Um, and I didn't think, I didn't, I didn't know if there was going to be a next phase because I didn't know if we were going to meet, reach a critical mass. And by October, we had got to 165. So then it was like, OK, let's, let's keep going. So what we're looking to do is we will be closing the membership of the Valuable 500 at um, the UN General Assembly uh, week on the 21st of September in New York with an event. Um, we will also, we've put together a three-year um, change program for our CEOs, which is around leadership and culture and brand and representation, reporting, and research. So we're asking our CEOs, so internally, what are the triggers in their business that they can support the operationalization of disability? And then externally, how can they use their influence? So that's kind of a really kind of very succinct version of what we're going to be doing. And I think one of the most exciting things, I can say this now, because after the press conference in Davos on Tuesday, um, we will be announcing a, um, a strategic relationship with the World Economic Forum. Um, and things like that are, are hugely valuable to making sure that we maintain the momentum that we've built. I don't want it to drop. I want us to be able to create this community of CEOs at C-suite level to help them support their organizations. Because one thing I want to be very clear about, there have been a lot of people doing a lot of work for decades in this space, decades. And I nod to Debru here. I mean, there's been decades of work, great leaders. The problem is it has been not highlighted to leadership level. And the sooner we get that, that work up to leadership visibility, the sooner we can amplify it, accelerate it, and operate it. So our job is to help our CEOs do that. So that's our sort of next phase. And another, if I'm allowed, just big smile on my face. Um, everybody knows that I have been obsessed with reporting and how disability is reported both internally in businesses and externally. Um, and one of the things that we really wanted to affect change in is I do not believe there should be a sustainability index or an inclusion and diversity index that does not have disability metrics in it. That is just not acceptable anymore. And on the 14th, we had the Tortoise Sustainability Index, which had metrics on disability. And if there was ever a reason to underpin why we do the Valuable 500, some of the, the results for that were just terrifying. So yeah, I, I'm really proud of that. And that's just the first of many, because we should never, ever have the word inclusion and diversity without disability metrics uh, associated with it, ever again. I agree. I agree. And we also see Absolutely. disability equality indexes and stuff that, that don't address accessibility. If yeah. we don't have accessibility with technology and with built barriers, um, we, you can't hire us. I, I remember a sad story years ago where three gentlemen that were blind got hired and their tech, their assistive technology did not work with the company's technology and so they let them go. That is unacceptable. That is unacceptable. And that in the United States and um, but I would so I totally agree with you and we just need we're part of humanity we're part of the community and so we're, we should always be included in everything it's ridiculous for us not to be included in any anyway it's, it's frustrating sometimes when we're not all you know rowing in the same direction well I'm not going to help you because maybe it'll take away something from me which is ridiculous I'm going to help you I'm going to do everything because we all win when we're pulling together and moving in the same direction 
But I would also like to ask you a question that I should have warned you I was going to ask you before we went on air. But you made an announcement at Zero Project, which is a wonderful conference, saying you were going to retire. And um, and you don't look like you're retiring to me. I, I, I don't, yeah, I, I don't see you working every single day, every single minute of the day that you look like you're retiring. And so somebody recently asked me about that. And I'm like, yeah, we're not going to let her retire. So I was just wondering for anyone that happened to be at that conference, if you could just uh, address that. <laughs> you don't have to work uh, too hard. No, no, it's. There are two things I want to say, and that is movements can't be built on one individual. And I have been obsessed with this for a very long time, and that's why our expert partners, of which you're one of eight, was very important. And all the friends that we have around the world, like Enable India or Access Israel or My Ability in Austria and a and in, in Australia, and, and we have so many partners. And right. The Nippon I Foundation. Just, yeah, like we just cannot, you cannot have a Caroline Casey on her own. And and that's the other thing that I've always wanted to see, if we can get the next generation, like the Molly Burks and Eddie Nobadoos and the Sinead Burks and getting them speaking too, because movements are, are for all of us. So that's the number one thing. And I felt I'm, maybe I'm 48 years old and I should start sort of, um, just start coming to the back. Um, and that was a big thing. The second thing was I was genuinely worried that we weren't, you know, we weren't going to get to where we got to. And I, I was I was frightened. Is it OK to say that I had fear like anybody else did? But what happened was once we, we reached this kind of critical mass, I was like, there is a next phase. There is a future in the valuable 500. We know we can deliver. And I didn't want to do anything until I knew that we could deliver. And that's really important to me with integrity, with our values substantive change. I want to deliver impact. And what I want to do is not exist impactfully in three years' time. So to answer your question, I will, we've just been appointed a CEO to the Valuable 500, and I think that's the right thing for me to do. And I will be very much involved um, as more of a, a founder and a, a chairperson. I will be working from more behind the scenes so that we can see new voices stand up, that we can hear new opinions, uh, so we can be challenged and new faces. I am not going anywhere. I am absolutely here for three years for sure. Very proud to be, and I want to see this organization, all of our organizations reach the potential that we can have in this, I think, this incredibly exciting moment. So I'm not going anywhere. But I am resigning as the CEO, but I am not retiring from the mission. I think it's good. I, I, I talk about that all the time. I'm, I'm proud to be over 60 now, and we have to allow other people to talk. We have to give the microphone to other people. You and I have been saying that for a long time. We said that in Geneva, another one of your partners, the ILO GBDN, and we talked about it there. And it's very important for us to open the door and let the Marianne Waits and the Mollies and all these amazing young people with disabilities stand up and, you know, talk their own truth. So I, I think it just makes us a stronger community. So we love you and we are so thankful for your leadership. For so long you've been leading. We appreciate it. Let me turn it over to Neil before he mutes me. <laughs> I'm not going to mute you, Deborah. No. Um, I can't mute you. <laughs> no, we can't mute you. No, it's impossible. And, 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 and you know, Sitting still, we don't think so either. Yeah, I, I, I don't see you far away from an airport departure lounge anytime soon. Um, you know, the, the, it's great to see that there's going to be another phase because it absolutely deserves to have it. And it's great that you can appoint someone to do the, you know, the, the running of this stuff because actually, you know, whilst we do need individuals as catalysts, um, and uh, you know, it, movements are bigger. You still need those individuals. You still need those spokespeople. You know, we, I, I've seen you work the crowd, and you're damn good at it. And we need people to continue working the crowd. You know, um, really, it's really important that we work the crowd uh, <laughs> you know, because that's how we win the hearts and minds and bring about that kind of substantive change. So. Um, Thank you for taking the time 
today because you're in the middle of the run up to your biggest day ever and you've taken the time out to speak to our community and to join us and tell us your special news so um caroline good luck go and knock them dead in davos make sure you um you know have those expensive cheese sandwiches you know? yeah when you we'll get to eat there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no um good luck and and well thank done you. it's been it's no, been brilliant I, I, I mean, I mean a huge thank you. And I just want to end by saying is I think the one thing that I want to do more of is do the strategizing from behind um, because I have never been more excited about what we can achieve. Um, and we've all been in this space a long time. Um, and I, but this, we are here because of all of you. And I, and I thank you very much for your support. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, and, and we need to say thank you to those who have supported us too. So my clear text, Barclays and, and Microlink because they do a, yes. a great job behind the scenes. So thank you very much and good luck. Well done. Love to you all. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.